And just uh, turn to the area of Al Qaeda and the links with the Taliban. How significant are those links today in terms of the, the Taliban insurgency? There, there are hypothetical and theoretical debates about that. Uh, where is the Taliban? Where is Al Qaeda? How they are linked or not? Whether we can see them together or not? But f if you look at it from the point of enemy of the uh, point of view of the enemy, uh, if you judge these things on the basis of their action, uh, what, as you see is that uh, it it looks that whether it's the Afghan Taliban or Pakistani Taliban or Al Qaeda, they see the whole region as one uh, theater of operation. Some of them uh, who, knows, uh, who knew the train and the geography uh, can be active one time in Afghanistan. The others who knew uh, the, the geography of Pakistan are active in Pakistan. Some act outside the region. Uh, I'm not saying that these are one, all these uh, elements, whether it's, these are the, the Taliban of Pakistan or Afghanistan or Al-Qaeda, they're one organization, but they're well coordinated. There is a force that brings them together because uh, there is financial coordination, there is arm to come to them. So I think uh, we have this tra troubled areas, the, the tribal area of, uh, between Afghanistan and Pakistan where Al-Qaeda uh, and, and the, the leadership of the Taliban uh, uh, are there and they are not also in the uh, in in, in, in uh, visible places, they move. But at the same time, they operate uh, eastward, westward, and there's also a push and pull factor. Sometimes you see more activities in Pakistan, uh, and then sometimes uh, more activities in Afghanistan. Uh, practically speaking, I don't want to buy into some of the ideas to separate them between yeah, Pakistan and Afghanistan, or, uh, or uh, also to separate these forces into good and bad, acceptable and unacceptable. I see. And um, in terms of the upcoming election, uh, I gather that the government has put in place uh, further measures to prevent a more electoral f fraud. Um, is there? Can you explain some of what, what's being done to prevent uh, a reoccurrence? It is, it is the job of the Afghan Indep Independent Commission. These safeguards are there. If these safeguards were not there, we didn't have the second round. Despite the whole uh, dispute about the first round, mm -hmm. uh, at the end, uh, President Karzai accepted uh, the outcome because one of the reasons was how to respect these safeguards, these mechanisms that are important for the legitimacy of the process. So now, uh, of course, there are uh, concerns uh, among the candidates, also among uh, international observers, to make sh to sure that second round should be uh, free of uh, uh, any irregularities or, or uh, malpractices. Uh, it's about poll stations. Uh, that uh, that uh, uh, to be open and to be observed and also to be checked by the the representative of the commissions, and it's also about uh, the the employees and staff of these commissions to work. So there are suggestions uh, and and focus on this, uh, but the whole attempt by the government of uh, by the commission. Uh, and also by the United Nations, and also the government of Afghanistan uh, and candidates, the whole uh, debate and attempt is how to make sure, how to uh, assure that this round of election is to be more free and more uh, fair. And then one, just one final question. How significant is the fact that winter is coming? And uh, how, do, how will that, you know, the climate issue, weather issue affect uh, fighting ahead? There has been a debate uh, in the press uh, uh, and s some people uh, became first rounders, some second rounders, some even at the beginning before the second round thought 
that for the sake of uh, legitimacy of the elections and legitimacy of the outcome, we should have a second round. Uh, but there were people also uh, that after the first round, they thought a second round uh, uh, would be difficult and there may be a less turnout uh, or the weather may be an impediment. Uh, I'm personally not ignorant of the fact that, for example, winter can prevent some people in some places uh, or can minimize the number of participants in some places. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is no other solution in Afghanistan. The only constitutional solution is that after 15 days uh, or after two weeks, if there is no winner of the first round, you should have second round. Mm -hmm. uh, if people think about political solutions for Afghanistan, there are thousands of political solutions, but they are not constitutional. And I think the international community is committed to respect the votes of and the, 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 the view of Afghans. And the view of Afghan, Afghans cannot be reflected without a constitutional process, that is the election. Uh, so if we all are committed for a democratic process in Afghanistan and we respect the, the, the constitution of Afghanistan, we should, res, we should uh, allow and help and support the second round to happen. Well, on that note, Ambassador, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us and uh, wish your country good luck in these upcoming elections. Thank you very much. Thanks. Joining me today was Afghanistan's Chief Envoy to the UN, Ambassador Zahir Tanin. I'm Linda Fasulo.